In this tutorial, we'll show you how to easily create a texture atlas in Adobe Photoshop. In this example, the texture atlas is intended to be used in a 3D editor to map a track surface, but instead, a texture atlas may also be used to map other 3D objects, like buildings or vegetation. So, what exactly is a texture atlas? A texture atlas is a large picture that contains several smaller ones. When several small textures are used often in an application, it is generally more effective to store them in a texture atlas, which the graphics hardware treats as a single unit. This is a texture atlas from the Rally Sim Richard Burns Rally. At the end of this video, we built an atlas with only a few textures and export it in DDS format. As previously said, we're using Photoshop, in this case, version CS5, but you may use any Photoshop alternative as long as it can save the file in DDS format. DDS stands for Direct Draw Surface. Environment maps and textures used in gaming software are commonly stored in DDS files. DDS texture files are also needed for Richard Burns Rally. You must make sure that a DDS plugin is present in Photoshop in order to later save the texture atlas in the appropriate format. You can find D3D DDS in Photoshop by going to Help and then About Plugin. Alternatively, open a brand new document and choose File and Save As. The DDS format should then be an option. Installing the plugin is necessary if it isn't already there. The NVIDIA website offers a download for the plugin. The description below includes a link that leads to it. The texture atlas we're going to make can be used to paint a track surface mesh in a 3D editor like Blender or 3D Studio Max. To start, we must gather textures for asphalt roads, roadside vegetation, gravel roads, grass, fields, and other surfaces. It is possible to create these textures by capturing images, but it is also possible to obtain already created textures from the internet. For instance, you may download free textures from the website SketchUp Texture Club. In the description is a link to this website. Now we're going to set guidelines in Photoshop. Let's stick with the 2048 by 2048 pixel size that most of the Richard Burns Rally Course surface textures have. When the texture atlas is split into 8 by 8 parts, 64 pieces of 256 by 256 pixels result. Then a chunk of 256 by 256 pixels may be utilized in a 3D editor to create a track surface that is approximately 16 square meters in size. Of course, you have the option to select a greater resolution. Lower resolutions shouldn't be used since the textures will blur too much. We have saved a Photoshop template with guides and example textures on our website. A link is in the description. So, we are now prepared to begin creating the texture atlas. We have opened the previously mentioned template in Photoshop. We also use a grass texture that was previously downloaded, as well as a tarmac texture with grass borders. Select, copy, and paste the tarmac texture into the atlas. Then rotate the tarmac texture 90 degrees. The texture should then be placed for simple scaling between the guidelines. Make sure that Snap to Guides is activated. The tarmac texture should then be shrunk to fit between two vertical guides, with a little strip of tarmac extending beyond the guides. We can use this for the roadsides. We move this tarmac texture to the upper left corner of the atlas.
Two square tarmac plates are enough to build our example track, so cut off the bottom half. Change the name of this layer to tarmac. Then, on both sides of the road, copy the roadsides up to the guiding lines and paste them into a new layer. Move the roadside textures to the desired area in the atlas. Merge the layers and rename this layer to Roadsides. Then copy and paste the grass part of the original texture into a new layer. Delete the original texture, we no longer need it. Rename the layer with the grass part to match. This layer is required for the new grass texture. We'll now go back to the previously opened grass texture. Go to Image, then Adjustments, and finally Match Color. Set the Source option to the Template RBR Track Surface file. And for layer, the match layer with the grass part must be selected. The bright green grass color has been replaced by the equivalent grass color tone from the texture atlas. Copy and paste the grass texture into the texture atlas file. Reduce the size of the grass texture to 256 by 256 pixels. Remove the match layer, we no longer require it. Change the name of the grass layer to grass. Move the grass texture up to the roadsides so we can see whether the color tones of the textures match. And, as you can see, there is room for improvement. Photoshop allows you to achieve this in a variety of ways. We chose to apply the burn tool and the dodge tool in this example.
In addition, various color modifications were made using hue and saturation. The goal is to match the textures as closely as possible. You may also experiment with color balance. If you're happy with the result, transfer the grass texture to its final location in the atlas. Then duplicate the grass layer and place it behind the roadsides layer. Merge the roadsides layer with the two grass layers, then name it roadsides. Then we take the lower section of the texture from the roadsides to provide some diversity to the upper area of the texture. Merge the two layers and rename the new layer. The bottom section can be removed. We now have a texture atlas large enough to create a road in a 3D editor. Of course, it is preferable to add additional textures to the atlas so that it is completely filled and may be used to maximum benefit when creating a 3D scene. You now know how to proceed, and will save the texture in DDS format. Choose File, Save As, name the file, and select the D3D DDS format. Choose to save and choose DXD1, which means no alpha channel. You'll need the alpha channel later on if you want to generate textures of trees and shrubs. However, not for the track surface. DXT1 is sufficient for now. When you select save, the texture atlas will be saved in DDS format. We hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.